Hey, Viking fans, this is Keith Millard, and you are listening to the One Bar and Lupicus Show. Go Vikes! All right, welcome back to the One Bar and Lupicus Show. I am One Bar, and another scolding with the enemy, a preseason training camp version. This time, it is the Chicago Bears with Foz from Fob Sports Talk, uh, one of the top Chicago Bears YouTubers out there. We pick his brain. He lets us know if we should be scared of those damn bears or if we should be laughing our asses at them. Uh, we dig into everything, draft roster strengths weaknesses check it out and uh remember to subscribe to Foz sports and hashtag swag in the comments for a chance to win some one bar and lupagus gear when we hit 3600 subs all right we are joined with Foz from Foz sports talk one of the best bears youtube channels out there hit him up give him a sub uh so you can keep tabs on our nfc north rival Foz. it is uh it is a pleasure to have you uh thanks for joining the show how the hell are you I'm good. I'm good. We're just about getting ready for the football season to start. You can smell it in the air. Training camp is back. So football is back. So I'm excited to talk. Let's do it. Yeah. And it's, uh, it, it smells delicious. And we Love had, uh, we had micro Mike on from the lions a couple of days ago. So the whole point of this is we want to dig into you. We want to know what the bears have to offer this upcoming season. We want to know their strengths, weaknesses. We want to know everything about them. Uh, and you were the guy to give us those answers. So let's do this. But before we before we get into the Bears, I got to selfishly talk Vikings real quick. Um, I asked this to everybody just to get your thoughts. But Vikings overall, not that you've done the ins and outs of everything they've done this offseason or anything like that. But just over the years, like the Vikings, when you play them as a Bears fan, as somebody who covers the Bears what are your thoughts when you play the Vikings? Do you feel bad for us? Are you excited to play us? Do you sweat all night thinking about playing us, or do you laugh? Uh, I certainly don't laugh. That's only for the Lions. No, I kid. <laughs> um, for the Vikings, it's kind of interesting, Matt, because uh, I think I'm a little indifferent when I play you guys. I think the Vikings, in a way, are kind of on the same level as the Bears, where it's it's not like you guys are a laughing stock, but I don't consider you guys Super Bowl contenders. So it's kind of right in the middle, you know, solid team. And, you know, honestly, if it wasn't for the last two days and Aaron Rodgers announcing that he's coming back to the Packers, uh, you guys were getting a lot of love this offseason to, to potentially win this division. And if that was the case that, you know, maybe Aaron Rodgers was going to get traded or, or not come back to Green Bay, um, the Vikings were the front runner in this division. Um, so to me, uh, do I like playing the Vikings? Um, I'm indifferent. I have respect for you guys, definitely more so than the Lions. And then, of course, they don't, you guys don't scare me as much as the Packers. But it's a healthy respect there for the Vikings. Yeah, I think that I think that's fair. I think it goes both ways on that one, where if we split with the Bears, it's just kind of like, all right, that makes sense. Uh, and, uh, yeah, jabbing, jabbing at the Lions. I love it. I hope Micro Mike watches this one so he can see that, get all fired up. <laughs> Uh, so let's, let's talk bears. Let's get to know these bears. If we should be scared of them, what's going on. And first off, we got to talk to draft, um, Justin Fields and Tevin Jenkins round one and two was just damn near silly. Um, that should not have happened. I wish it wouldn't have happened, especially Tevin Jenkins in round two fields. I get, but what, what are your overall thoughts on how you guys panned out, uh, from the draft? I love it. Um, there's no other way to put it. I think Ryan Pace um, knocked this out of the park, and that's saying a lot for a guy who, uh, you know, is on the hot seat or maybe is not no longer on the hot seat, but certainly was prior to this draft. And I think everything that the that he had on his to-do list, he pretty much hit it. And uh, we're talking about get the franchise excited for the future with drafting a quarterback in Justin Fields and then upgrading the offensive line by taking a Tevin Jenkins. And again, he did what he does, which is, you know, trade up and give up assets. But again, here's the thing. If they end up turning out to be what we think, we'll do it every single day and, and it doesn't matter. So to me, I think Ryan Pace did a, a fantastic job. And I think now the pressure is actually on Matt Nagy because Ryan Pace did what he needed to do. And now it's about Matt Nagy using these players and putting them in the position to, to uh, develop and uh, succeed. Yeah, and then uh, I should give you a little love too. They sprinkled in a little Daz Newsom in round six. Was it six or seven? Yeah, he did. I, I like I like Daz Newsom. So, yeah, no, he's a good addition as well uh, to the wide. All right, let's uh, let's move on to the big talker. Something you're probably sick of talking about, but let's talk about quarterbacks. Justin Fields, we already brought up. Andy Dalton, I believe it was a one-year deal. 
I'm not going to get into Andy Dalton about that whole contract. That is what it is. But what are your thoughts heading into it? Give me a prediction. I could have sworn I saw something where Nagy pretty much already anointed Dalton the starting quarterback. Yeah, this has been my issue with Nagy, uh, where he gets in his own way a lot of times. He's stubborn. So it almost feels at this point like Andy Dalton was told no matter what happens, you know, the earth could end tomorrow, but you're going to be our starting quarterback week one. Okay, keep in mind the week one part. Week so one. it doesn't very matter. Important. If, very important. Yeah, yeah, very important. If he doesn't, if he doesn't, if he gets benched week two, fine. But at least, hey, we promised him he'll start week one. We're going to give him that promise, you know. And so that's that's kind of the gripes that Bears fans uh, like me and other fan, other Bears fans have, which is you want to start Andy, totally fine. If he's looking better than Justin Fields in training camp, OTAs, cool, do it. I just don't want him to start if if your reasoning is because we promised it to him, because we told him, because that was our word. No, if Justin Fields outplays him, you play and start Justin Fields. So that's been my issue with Nagy, and you're absolutely right. It's It seems like they've just promised him that, and they're not backing off of it. And if that is the case, and that's what ends up happening, uh, I'm not going to be happy about it, but it seems like that's where it's headed. Well, let me let me throw you a curveball here. So let's say, I mean, I don't know where the Bears are as far as competing playoff-wise, but if the Bears weren't a team um, that wasn't going to compete, would you rather Fields sits for the year? Or do you want to get his butt out there? So I've gone back and forth on this. I want what's best for Justin Fields. I've always said this, whether that's sitting or whether that's starting. But I feel like, the one important thing you need to let Justin Fields do is to let him know that if he performs and puts in the work, he will get rewarded. So if he balls out in training camp, no matter what, and you're telling him that he still can't start, no matter how well he plays, I think that's a problem. You know, that's affecting his confidence at that point. Like, why am I even trying? I always bring back the analogy of, the Seattle Seahawks with Pete Carroll and Russell Wilson, if you remember back when they signed Matt Flynn to that ginormous contract. Flynn, baby. Oh, yeah. They drafted Russell Wilson in the fourth round. They had no intentions of starting Russell Wilson, but he just absolutely demolished him in training camp, Matt Flynn. And Pete Carroll's like, I got to start this guy. I got to start. I got no choice. And ever since, he's never had a losing season. So to me, I just want a fair shot, a fair competition. That's it. I don't want nobody get promised anything. And that's really it for me. But if Justin Fields ends up sitting for the entire year because that's what they needed him to do and he wasn't ready, I'm totally okay with that as well. Just make it fair. I like it. I like it. Uh, I did not expect the Matt Flynn name drop in this, uh, which was fantastic. Bringing back memories. <laughs> Guy just got paid an ass load to be a backup to Russell Wilson. Um, so the Bears, they're coming off two eight and eight seasons, I believe, um, back to back. Uh, 2021, what is different, whether it's good, whether it's bad, compared to what they were in 2020? What's the, what's the big change here aside from the obvious fields? Yeah, I don't want to name the obvious with Justin Fields. We'll, we'll put that aside for a second. The biggest difference to me is the offensive line. Um, I think with the drafting of Tevin Jenkins, and then we also took another offensive lineman in the fifth round and Larry Borum, um, that's an immediate upgrade just in talent, right? No matter what, that, that's a talent upgrade. And then you're getting guys back like James Daniels from injury. You're getting a healthier offensive line. I think the offensive line has a chance, and again, don't quote me on it, but I think they have a chance to be a top 15 unit. If, if I'm feeling really bold, maybe a top 12, something like that. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. They just have to stay healthy. And if Tevin Jenkins and Larry Borum end up being very solid, then I definitely think they have that opportunity. So offensive line definitely, I think, is better uh, from last season. And the other thing, too, is um, the defense. Uh, we have a new defense coordinator in Sean Desai. A lot of people don't know about him, but he's an in-house hire, and I'm excited for him because I feel like he is going to really rejuvenate this defense. Uh, we took a step back with Chuck Pagano. He just was not as good uh, with what we needed to do, so I think we're going to see a little bit uh, more of a closer defense to the 2018 level than the past year, so um, I'm excited about that. So I'd probably say defense and then the offensive line. All right. Well, looking at your roster, looking at the depth chart as a whole, I'm seeing some 
seeing some new faces along the Chicago Bears. Uh, Jesse James, you guys just signed. Justin Hardy, Damian Williams. I had no idea he was a Chicago Bear. I don't know where the hell of, that came a lot from. Of, a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't know that. He is a – I think that's a very underrated signing that the Bears had. Yeah, and uh, I mean, obviously Dalton, Marcus Trufant, just, just rambling off some guys. But which new face for the Bears – um, do you think we'll have the biggest impact in 2021? I think it's Damian Williams, honestly. Um, maybe not the most impact, but he'll definitely be impactful. And here's why. Uh, last season, um, fantasy football owners don't want to hear this, but it, I have to say last season, David Montgomery went off, which was great, right? I love David Montgomery. He's our starting running back, but we had no one behind him. Terry Cohen was hurt week three of the season. He's out with that ACL injury. And now you got scraps behind David Montgomery. So he has to be on the field for every snap. Well, that's not going to be the case this year. And that's why I say fantasy football owners don't want to hear this because I think David Montgomery is really going to get a reduced workload. We're going to get Tariq Cohen back. And now we have Damian Williams. And Damian Williams is a guy who can rush the football, obviously, but he can catch as well. And I promise you, if, if his name was Patrick Mahomes, he would have won Super Bowl MVP in that Super Bowl. Okay. <laughs> that's how well he played. Uh, so I really like this pickup, and, and I think he has a chance to be very impactful uh, for for the Bears. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that, and, and I think it's going to be a little bit of a three-headed monster committee, if you will, at the running back position. But Nagy knows if, if Dalton is starting, his best bet is to run the football, and I think that's why Damian Williams has a chance to uh, be impactful. Yeah, that's a good group of backs. I'm not overly looking forward to that. Um uh, looking at just the roster as a whole, biggest strengths when I when I think of the Bears, obviously defense always comes to mind. Um, Hakeem Hicks has absolutely owned the Vikings pretty much since he's been a Bear. Um, what is their biggest strength in the 2020s? Is it still that defense? It is still that defense for sure, um, but they did take a little bit of a hit. We cut Kyle Fuller. Um, which was not great. And that was just a salary cap hit. Um, so our secondary is a little weak, uh, but position wise, I'd say our linebacker group uh, led by Roquan Smith. So definitely the defense, I think that's the easy answer. Um, you know, we, we just talked about the running back group. I think that's a solid set of running backs. And then uh, receiver wise, we, we did add a lot of talent. I'm not going to say it's our best positional group. Uh, I, I still think that's the defense, but just receiver wise, if you think about it, uh, we have a Rob, our stud number one receiver. Then you have Darnell Mooney, who broke out last season going into his second year. Uh, behind him, you have Marquise Goodwin, who a lot of people don't know. He didn't play last year because of COVID concerns, but he's a speedy wide receiver. Uh, then we signed Demir Bird from the Patriots. Uh, didn't even mention Daz Newsome, the, the rookie six-round pick. So there's a lot of depth there at the receiver position, too. Um, so I, I'm kind of excited for that, but yeah, the easy answer is the defense. Uh, you bring up, you bring up a Rob, um, is this his final, final last dance, a, uh, Aaron Rodgers style, or I'm going to say more, more likely than not, it is his last dance. And here's why bears fans don't want to hear it, but I, this is why they, they, you know, want to hear me because I don't want to be biased. Right. And, and only, only say something that's going to work out for the bears. Alan Robinson wants to get paid and he absolutely should. We can tag him again, I believe, but next season he's going to be under free agent. And at this point, Allen Robinson doesn't care about, you know, the situation as much as the money. And at this point, if Justin Fields turns out to be what we want him to and he's the future, um, you're more focused on guys that will be here, you know, for the next five, ten years as opposed to the next two to three. So, um I'm probably 70, 30. A-Rob is probably in his last year with the Bears. I could be wrong. Hopefully I'm wrong on that, but that's just how I feel. It's crazy. I can't believe he's still only 27 years old. It seems like he's been in this league. It seems like he was in yeah. Jacksonville for like 15 yeah. years, and he's 27. That's, 27 that is, years that old. Is he deserves crazy. that cash. Yeah. He deserves that and big old chunk mind, of change. Keep in mind, Matt, I want A-Rob to stay. This is this is my answer for what I believe happens. Oh, yeah. If it was no, a day, I I'd pay the man because he deserves it. He's such an underrated receiver. I think you, even Vikings fans will admit that A-Rob is, is very underrated. So I want to pay him. Don't get me wrong, but I'm just letting you guys know how I feel about what's going to happen. Well, I like your feeling. I hope uh, I would like nothing more than him to play for the AFC West or something else. So we'll, yeah. we'll see what happens on that one. What's uh, 
as far as the Bears, camp battles, always one of the best part about training camp preseason. Which camp battle are you most looking forward to seeing for the Bears? Uh, cornerback. Uh, I already mentioned it's a position of weakness at this point. We only have uh, like one solidified corner. That's Jalen Johnson. He's a second round. Uh, excuse me. He's a second year player going this year. Um, had a very good rookie season. A lot of people didn't pay attention to him. Uh, but outside of him, you don't have anybody at that second cornerback spot, right? I mentioned Kyle Fuller's gone. So you'll have a lot of guys like a, a Desmond Trufant, who this is not the Atlanta Falcons, Desmond Trufant. Uh, uh, you have guys like that. And then, um, you know, we ob obviously mentioned the fact that this is a position of weakness. So um, Thomas Graham, a rookie quarterback we drafted this upcoming season. There's guys like Kendall Vildor. So it's really up in the mix on who's going to win this second quarterback job alongside Jalen Johnson I think that's the biggest camp battle I'm looking forward to uh, because that's really going to determine that position and then outside of that probably just the offensive line just showing that up you know we have Jermaine Afidi who I'm not a fan of at all I hope Larry Borum beats him out so oh, uh, probably cornerback and then the offensive line all right uh who's who's going to have that coming out party this year with Bears just going to Bears fans just be ecstatic right. about are you ready for this? This is I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I got a prediction, but I, I'm gonna let you go. Okay, now I don't know if I should say it because I, I, I feel like I'm the only one who's on this guy. But this is, this is my like, I feel like Charles Barkley with my guarantee over here. I think <laughs> it is Cole Komet. Cole, that's Komet. it. That was my guy. Cole yeah, Komet, right okay. in. Boom. Cole Komet to me is like in the perfect situation to break out. You got Jimmy Graham who's aging and we want to phase them out. Right. And man, Nagy's literally said in a press conference, his role is absolutely increasing. Okay. So we know he's going to get more playing time. And if Andy Dalton is the quarterback, we know he's going to like to throw to the tight end check down. He's not going to throw deep a lot. And Cole Komet in the middle of the field can really do a lot of damage. He's, he's a very versatile uh, tight end. And honestly, his stats last year weren't very good. He didn't play a lot, but if you extrapolate that to a 17 game season, his numbers would look pretty damn good. So I think Cole Komet's going to break out. I can easily see him catch over 50 balls, over 500 yards receiving, uh, maybe even four or five touchdowns uh, and, and more. So I love Cole Komet as my breakout player. I've been saying that all off season. I should have wrote it down so I could show it. So I actually proved that it was Cole Komet. Uh, but no, Vikings fans are in the, they're in the same thing. I mean, Irv Smith has got a, Irv, got a year yeah. on him. We want Irv Smith to break out this year. So we're on the same page with our second round tight ends. Komet was second round, wasn't he? Yeah, he was second round. Yeah, he was second round. And and I love Irv Smith too, by the way. Uh, you guys, obviously Kyle Rudolph not being there anymore. These are guys to target in fantasy football. These are sleeper tight ends. They're going to get a lot of work. I love it. Yeah, Jimmy Graham needs to get his walker and beat it. Uh Although I do hear, I do hope Eric Kendricks absolutely lays out Cole Komet in the middle of the field. Uh, and kind of on the same note, um, not so much coming out party, but who's the who's the sneaky player on this Bears roster that uh, very important, um, kind of a la Jimmy Kleinsasser early 2000s for the Vikings. Doesn't get much run, but he's a very important piece. Um, there's a couple players, actually. I, I don't really have one in particular, but I'll, I'll name a couple. I mentioned Jalen Johnson. I feel like a lot of people didn't pay attention to his rookie season, but he was fantastic for what the Bears needed. And and if we didn't have him and we had cut Kyle Fuller, like our, our cornerback room would be awful at this point. So, so Jalen Johnson, definitely. We're getting Eddie Goldman back. A lot of people didn't pay attention to that. He's coming back from uh, opting out of COVID. So that's going to be a big help to the defense. So I think uh, just from him, uh, you know, uh, adding to the team and it, it's almost like you're getting a star player without giving any anything up of value so that's a big one and then um I think on the offensive line Cody Whitehair doesn't get a lot of respect um he's always been solid a lot of people don't talk about him and he's really been the staple of the offensive line a lot of parts around him move but he's versatile he can play a lot of positions and uh, I feel like he doesn't get the type of respect and and none of these guys really do but that's why I'm saying they're uh they go under the radar but I think they deserve that respect all right. Uh, before we get into kind of expectations as far as the Bears, I do got to throw a Trubisky question at you. Sure. We, we we talked micro Mike about Stafford. I asked him, you know, are you are you are you pulling for this guy? He's with Detroit for so long, and he ripped them to shreds. He wants him to do nothing. What are your thoughts on Trubisky? He's a bill. The poor guy. I mean, I don't know if he's backup, third string, where is he? Yeah. Trubs, tell me you're pulling for him. 
I'm pulling for Trubisky, man. I really hope he goes out and balls out in Buffalo. Obviously, Bills fans don't want to see him on the field because that means Josh Allen's hurt. Totally get that. Uh, but, man, you could not find a nicer guy than Mitchell Trubisky, a man. And here's the thing with Mitch, right? Look, it, it never registered up here. Everything about Mitchell Trubisky was mental. And uh, if he was able to grasp the game mentally – um, all of his issues in Chicago with overthrowing the football, with not being accurate, I think would have been fixed. But I'm telling you, uh, he, Mitchell Trubisky was the epitome of a guy who would just come in, put in the work, head down, good soldier for the team, the guy you want in your corner. Again, he just wasn't very good, so we had to let him go. But, man, no, never had any issues. Not The anti-Johnny Manziel, okay? Like literally everything you want in, in, in a quarterback from a uh, personality perspective – that was Mitchell Trubisky, but uh, yeah, I really, I really hope he uh, does well in Buffalo, um, and I'm rooting for him. I'm rooting for him like crazy because um, we're not big Matt Nagy fans here in Chicago, and if he plays well, that would be an indictment on Matt Nagy. So uh, that would be fun. But yeah, I'm definitely rooting for Mitch. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to give you shit and, and throw stuff at you, but like I said, we got Christian. Christian Ponder was pretty, pretty close to the same thing. Good guy, put in the work. Just was not very good. So we had our own version of Troops. All right, final, final. Uh, again, we are joined with Foz from Fob Sports Talk. Hit up the links in the description. Go, go give him a sub. One of the best Bears YouTubers out there. Um, and not just the Bears. Uh, all right, expectations as far as what everybody in Chicago is thinking is for the Bears. Are they going to suck? Are they going to compete? What are your thoughts? Just uh, put, putting your Chicago Bear heart aside. So... Obviously, the quarterback situation is going to determine a lot, right? We're expecting Andy Dalton to start, but if he doesn't and Justin Fields is starting, that changes up a lot of things. Uh, at a baseline, everybody's expecting the Bears to be a middle-of-the-pack team. And when I say everybody, mainly the mainstream media. And then as far as Bears fans, I do think so as well. They're expecting the Bears to be a bit of a middle-of-the-pack team. Again, we've been 8-8 eight eight the last two seasons. Now it's not possibly be 8-8 eight eight because of the 17 game schedule. Yeah, that. But uh, I'll give you a worst-case and a best-case scenario. Worst case, I'm looking at probably five to six wins if everything just completely uh, collapses and, uh, you know, we're starting Dalton the entire year. Fields never sees the field. And, uh, you know, the defense falls apart. But on the higher end, uh, I do think this Bears team, if everything clicks, is capable of 10 wins. Uh, I think they can do a 10 and 7. Uh, I think it's possible. So uh, you just average that out. You come somewhere in the middle, you know, 8 wins, 8 and 9, 9 and 8, or along those lines. Uh, that's what I would say are the uh, baseline expectations for this team. All right. I like it. I like it. Hopefully none of those wins come against the – Beautiful shade of purple called the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, once again, Foz from Foz Sports Talk. Thanks for joining the show, man. We are ready. We know what to expect from the Chicago Bears. Uh, we look forward to having you on throughout the season if you are game. And uh, thanks again for joining the show. Absolutely. It was a pleasure being on, and I look forward to being on more times. So thank you so much. All right.